Hello, everybody. I am Drew Duncan. Do not forget that you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Drew Duncan Radio. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan Radio as well. I am on Patreon. Simply look for Drew Duncan Radio. And do not forget, I am wherever you're listening to the podcast. Simply tell your device to play Drew Duncan on Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Deezer, iHeartRadio. I am wherever you are listening to the podcast. Something that's really been burning on me the last, even before the game happened, because I I think that we all knew what the end result was going to be when OU had an ugly nightmare of a game with the LSU Tigers, is that to me, they really are the Buffalo Bills of the college football world. And unlike the NFL, one of the things that can happen is that through special favor and privilege and very good location, you can look like you're a dominant football team. But the truth of the matter is, is you're not. Unlike the Buffalo Bills in one regard, the Bills had to earn their way to the Super Bowl. There was no getting voted in. There was no, well, people still see their schedule like this or like that. Whatever the case may be, the Oklahoma Sooners are at an advantage because of the location that they've been in the Big 12 and how it has been down. And then, of course, in the eyes of the voters, look, I don't know why that people still think about this football team the way that they were back in the 70s and even in the 80s, I guess you could say. But in the 90s, this football team really went through a bad spell. And then to top it all off, after the sanctions were over with and Howard Schnellenberger was a coach there for a little while. And he even said he was the right guy for the wrong job. And and remember Schnellenberger was known for turning programs around, right? He did it with the university of Miami. He did it with Louisville when he was at Florida Atlantic. He coached them all the way from the time of the inception of that program, took them from a D two school to a division one program and coached the youngest ever team to win a ball game. So, mind you, Howard Schnellenberger had a difficult time turning that program around. And then along comes another coach, and everything starts to look good, and OU gets Josh Hypo as a recruit. Bob Stoops comes in and seemingly finishes the job. Now, there are a lot of other people that look at it and go, well, he did all that with somebody else's recruits. The bottom line here is, since Josh Hypo, this football team has been unable to assert themselves dominantly in big games. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, he was called Big Game Bob. Well, Big Game Bob didn't exactly have the greatest record outside of his conference. As a matter of fact, I believe it was less than 30% against teams that were ranked in the top 25 that finished it ranked in the top 25 out of the conference. Not Big 12, out of the conference. I want to reiterate that. And then, of course, in BCS championship games, they didn't fare very well. I mean, come on, look at it like this. OU gets dusted by Kansas State. They still end up playing for a national title. And then, of course, what's the end result of that? They get beat. What else did you think was going to happen? And they're in the benefit of being in the Big 12, which has had nobody. How relevant and how good has Texas been over the last 10 years? I'll wait. Baylor's been a hit and miss program. Kansas State's been a hit and miss program. I mean, come on, think about Kansas State. The one year that they had recently was what, 2013? They started out very good. They were undefeated 12-0, and and then they got beat by a 5-7 and Baylor team at the end of the season, and then they got beat down by Oregon and what was it, the Fiesta Bowl, if I remember correctly? I mean, top to bottom, when you look at the Big 12, can you really look at any program and say, this is a premier team in all college football? Can you look at a West Virginia and say that? A KU, a K-State, a Baylor... I know that Matt Rule just allegedly turned down an interview with the Cleveland Browns as a head coach. I get all that, but that's another story another time. But what I'm telling you is, after what happened against OU, that should pretty much tell you everything that you need to know. And OU struggled with some teams into this season that really were not that good. And then you look at what they've done in the playoffs. Beat down a year ago when they had Baker Mayfield. Beat down this year again. Then they got beat by Clemson, was it 37-17? to If I remember correctly, OU has lost 
every playoff game that they have been in by 20 or more points. 20 or more points. I mean, the only way that they weren't going to get in maybe is if Utah won the Pac-12. And I was one of the few that was like a really huge Utah fan from the beginning was Zach Moss. But I did say that the weakness of the football team from the jump was their quarterback, Huntley. He's, he's a tough kid, but it just doesn't seem to have that extra it factor. Look, the bottom line is this. OU is not really that great of a program. They've produced some Heisman winning quarterbacks over the years. But when you look at what they've done in the NFL, for instance, I mean, you want to talk about location, location, location. Didn't Jason White win a Heisman Trophy and not even get drafted in the NFL? How well did Josh Heupel's career turn out in the NFL? What about Baker Mayfield? One year so far, his rookie season, I don't want to take anything away from him, but was it really a sophomore slump this year? When you've got Odell Beckham Jr., Nick Chubb, putting up the numbers that he did. You've got Jarvis Landry. I mean, come on. Kyler Murray's doing pretty good with the Arizona Cardinals under the radar, of course, because they don't have a winning football team over there, but I don't think anybody can play quarterback behind that offensive line. So the jury's still out on him. The bottom line is, is when you start looking at the Oklahoma Sooners, they're putting up all these numbers, they're producing all these Heisman Trophy winners, but what is happening in the big games and in the next level? The same thing that was happening to the Buffalo Bills. They would get there, and they just seemed to sputter out of control. I mean, weren't those bad games that they played in in those Super Bowls? And you look at the Oklahoma Sooners, these are bad games that are happening right now in the playoffs. This is not entertaining to watch this. It's not fun to watch this. Why do I have to be forced To watch a playoff game that you know I want to watch, why do I have to be subjected to watching the Oklahoma Sooners get their asses handed to them yet again? And don't talk to me about quarterback play or this or that or any excuse you want. The bottom line is, is they are in a fantastic position in the Big 12 that is officially a weak conference. And I have said for a very long time, that the only team that gets any respect in the Big 12 is Oklahoma. And that was case in point this year. Remember when the initial rankings came out and a lot of people felt like Baylor was getting snubbed? But then we saw what happened as the season progressed and after the OU game and then, of course, into the bowl game. And, you know, Baylor just really kind of sputtered. Right, They got found out as a lot of these teams do. They get found out, and that was a case in point with Baylor. What competition did OU really have in the Big 12 this year? Certainly wasn't Texas. Yeah, they looked good to start, but boy, how did they finish? Yeah, and they won that Alamo Bowl. You know, that's great and all, but it wasn't like they beat one of the best teams in all the nation. You understand what I'm talking about here? It's a hit and miss program. And I like Sam Elliger. I think he's a damn good quarterback. I thought Texas two seasons ago had the best case scenario with Shane Bluchel and Sam Ellinger, but they can't figure out a way to win football games, big games that matter. And that's where the Oklahoma Sooners are at. They cannot win games that matter at this point. Playoff games matter. Ask the Buffalo Bills. I mean, I I know in that 30 for 30, man, we got there four times. Yeah, you did. You sure did. There was a picture that was floating around. The Chicago Bulls. 72 and 10 means nothing without a championship. What's the point of just getting there? Only to get hosed. If you're going to go out, go out like a champion. Go down close. Go out swinging. Don't don't go out getting your, your mouthpiece knocked out of you. Come on. Guys, I am Drew Duncan. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan Radio. I am wherever. You listen to podcasts, simply tell your device to play Drew Duncan on Spreaker, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeart, etc. And as always, don't you dare touch that dial.